talk about that. Good morning, everybody. You are about to be looking live at Savage Race Chicago. We're going to be your live coverage team today. My name is Matt B. Davis. Over there at the wall, the shoe wall of fame, it's Bracken Crocker. Did I say the name of the shoe wall correctly? You said that well, and you said my last name well. We're off to And I got your last name right. Yeah. Hit the ground running today. Uh, we want to show you, uh, fine folks, a quick look at the rig today, which has got some netting on there. What would you call? What would you call that? I would call it the. Uh, I don't know. What would you call it? Uh, a low net. That's not very creative. Wow! Look at you coming in hot and insulting oh. our. No, no, <laughs> our my hosting. name. My name for it's not no, very got creative. It. No, no this start, I love start, this kind of stuff. All right, we'll start from the beginning. Can you can you go? Uh, oh, it's it's at the beginning. I thought yeah. it'd be at the end. All right, so you hop on and you go under this net undercarriage. Yes. Would it be would it be improper to call it the sack? That's not very nice. Um, so you go under this, and then you go over here to the ladder. You're gonna want to climb up the ladder. I love this. I love oh, he's. He's showing us the flexibility or the tension of it. Oh, to this. I didn't notice this. What is that made of, Bo? It's uh, what well, we've commonly called a stripper pole, but it's made out of two by four. <laughs> okay. So what do you call the net? Can we just get the official Savage name for the net? I don't think we have one yet. Just a low net. All right. Yeah. We'll, all right. We'll, we'll, take, we'll take your comments on this one, by the way, if you guys want to let us know. All right. So well, then we go to... Name. So then we go to the pole, to rope ladder, to cheese board. Did you turn the cheese around to make it extra difficult? Remember the first time it was really a rough. It was a rough go. That's a good question for Lee. He would. Uh, he can kind of give you some commentary on that. Okay. Um, I'm not sure which direction this is. Okay, and then it goes to another ring to the bell. Now, much like last time. This is not the last obstacle. They will go from this to yank my chain, correct? Correct. And then and then barn doors is 28. Is that correct? You know it. Just for the heck of it, just to keep it spicy, we're going to throw a couple of walls. You got to finish with something uh, that everybody can do, right? You got to finish very strong. So we I, love I that. guess. <laughs> is this a new mentality? <laughs> no, we, it's pretty common. Okay, I, I just the last few we've been looking at ink my chain as as the last or cheese board. So I like the fact that you're giving someone a win here. I would say that yank my chain is doable unless you just killed yourself on the rig. Correct. <laughs> I, I had a couple people message me last week and say yank my chain is not bad. I don't know what the big deal is. My well, answer was when, you're absolutely right yeah. unless you spent the previous twenty minutes destroying your grip and weigh less than or equal to the chain. Correct. <laughs> All right. We got... Oh, real, world, real World is also directly before the rig, by the way. Wait a minute. Hang on. Let me, let me look here. Real World... That doesn't usually take people out, though, right? No. No, it's just Close line, appetizer. Clothesline, Real World, rig, yank my chain, barn doors. So, going to be fun uh, ending of the race here. What I like about this is that it gives people hope. If if you have a easy finish, you know that once you get to the last hard obstacle, it's the fastest runner to the finish. Okay. This type of finish gives everyone hope that even if you get outrun prior to it, you're not out of it. There's Lee. Matt, See, have you done a low net like this? No, I'm trying to think where there's even been one. They've had them at OCR, WC, they've had them at a few others, but what I like about this is that because it's this slow, it's really, really difficult to to do it in rhythm. A lot of rigs, people get the momentum down and they fly through it. This just stops you in your tracks and it makes you be competent. All right, so didn't we see didn't we see a Kempson rig with this? Yeah, th theirs was higher, and you had a, a running start. You could kind of launch out and lache through. But this one here, it's too low. There's, I'm sure that if people got a couple of runs through, they could get a good technique for it, but they all are going to see it on their first try. So it's going to stop momentum dead. 
Hey, Lee, can we establish what failure is on that obstacle? Yes, we sure can. Uh, so if, so if I'm on that and my back grazes the bottom or my pinky grazes the grass, like what's, what's failure on this, on this low rig, buddy, or this low uh, – what are you calling it? Savage rig, baby. Any suspension <laughs> of weight. So, I mean, if you've, like, got a piece of cloth dangling from your clothing and it touches the grass, that's fine. But if uh, your body is actually touching – the ground that's a different story um if your foot if your foot like swings down and touches the ground it's a dq so you will be able well, to we'll be watching and you can tell like if someone's foot swings and there's no uh jarring motion from them hitting the ground it just kind of swings through the grass you'll be able to tell versus if it swings and hits the ground there's like a, a brief stopping motion before it continues through suspension well, of weight Rye like Claxton, Rye Claxton coming in hot, belly of the beast. I love it. It resembles like a little like underhanging belly there. I love it. Let's let's call it, let's go with that. Belly of the Pretty beast. Well, the also, I read I read your Instagram post, Rye, yesterday. I think you heard that. I read your Instagram post. So you're coming in with all kinds of hotness. So Lee, are you on the men? We got a bunch of cameras here. Are you on the men? Yep, I'm at the start now. I'm just kind of hanging out, getting ready for them to enter the corral. I'm going to be on the men. Um, Caleb will be on the females. Um, All right. Them up. Okay, so let's get Caleb, since you're going to be a few feet away on the, in the, on the actual truck or the gator, let's get Caleb to get right in front of the men really close so we can get names of anybody we don't recognize, perhaps. How about that? Okay. And then he, can, and then he can wait for the women. You hear? I hope Caleb uh, caught all that. He gave me a thumbs up. I love when technology works. I don't love how f the difference of phone is still massive difference. Look how clear Lee is and how slightly less clear Bo is. And again, I think it's just phone manufacturers uh, versus, what do you call it? Versus services. Come on, Bracken. <laughs> Help me out, buddy. Well, I can't read your mind, but I do know that in, in this Midwestern area, you get anything slightly rural and the service providers really, really vary, unfortunately. We ran into that last week and Matt, I was in a dead zone. Couldn't, couldn't tune in, couldn't get results from races. It was a nightmare. Now, to put you a bit of on the spot, yes. um, uh, not any pressure, just as a, as a fellow fan of the sport and friend, a couple people did ask. Is Bracken racing or commentating as this is sort of his neck of the woods? It is. Um, I am not racing. This is not a fake background. Look, this is not there, digital. See, there's already a there's already a comment like that. So so what 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 so do you have an answer? Would you like to give an answer? You don't have to. Um yeah, I'll give an answer. I'm in no position to race right now. Okay. I I I have very, very little uh, running fitness right now. And I can't stomach stepping up to a race start line without the ability to compete for the win, or at least believe that I have the ability to, to be in the race. And I don't want to show up out of shape, so I'm not. That's it. Okay. So there's my sad story. Did you happen to catch Ryan Atkins yesterday? Did I catch him? Yeah, there was a video up yesterday where Ryan further explained his thoughts on Utah. No, because I was satisfied with his original post. Okay. I didn't feel the need to, to hear more explanation because I agreed with the sentiment of all of it. Well, I'm going to throw something that, at you. Okay. I'm going to throw something at you, Bracken. I enjoyed Fast and the Furious, but mm -hmm. when I was given the opportunity to learn even more in Too Fast, Too Furious, I still, I still went and see, saw it. Yeah. <laughs> that movie certainly didn't make you smarter for having seen it. <laughs> And here's here's my take on that. I agreed 100% with everything Ryan Atkins said as a competitive racer and as a coach. However, of the 3,000 people who read it, probably only 300 maybe were the intended audience. <laughs> Hi and there, it, whoever, whoever that was. So Welcome. the 2,700 others who took it personally and said, well, this doesn't work for my lifestyle. Well, it wasn't even intended for you. It was intended for the people who dedicate their life to the sport, call themselves pro or elite in their uh, their social media profiles, and then showed up unprepared. That that was my take from it, and his it was a little harsh if you were uh, every man, every woman reading it, but the sentiments were all exactly right. 
you have to prepare for a bigger race than what you're about to do. We had a lot of time before the first mountain race and we all knew it was going to be steep and hot. So I, I don't think that he was attacking anyone, but like him and myself and Kirk and you and anyone else who deals with social media, I'm sure he was tired of seeing everyone's built in excuses right afterwards. And he felt it was time to remind people, if you call yourself a pro or elite, you should probably live like it. Rachel C, we, we would love to see you on the course today. I understand you're not, but big, big hello, big savage hello from, uh, from the team here. Um, you know, Bracken, I've, I quote you a lot now. I'm a Bracken fan. Uh, oh boy. I listen to your show once in a while, not every week. Who can possibly keep up with all that content? Um, but we're doing the, st they're doing the, uh, Pledge of Allegiance here or the, uh, what do you call it? National Anthem. Thank you. Um, when you say everybody's coming to the start line with something, a niggle here, a niggle there, they raced last week, they haven't raced in a long time, all the excuses go out the window. When you step on the start line, that's it. Otherwise, you yeah. didn't race. Like you, Bracken, chose not to race today. But once you do, excuses are out the window. And I really like that for anybody, for for age group for elite if you're coming you're coming yeah i, I believe you're otherwise, race to, open. otherwise just race open and mess around with your buddies yeah i believe that by committing to the start line you are foregoing certain things like excuses and i'm not ready uh, if you're not ready you don't show up and if you aren't ready and you show up then you're committing to say that i am ready and i'm here and i'm not going to cheapen my race or anyone else's by blaming other factors I, I just think that if you take the start line, you're healthy, even though no one arrives 100% healthy, because how can you make it through a big training block without anything holding you back? But if you're at the start line, you're healthy, you're fit, you're the best you've ever been, and that's the only mentality to take. Otherwise, it's just too slippery of a slope. You prepare your Instagram excuse beforehand and you see the posts of, well, I can't wait for this week, even though I haven't really been training in six weeks. And this is going to be so much fun, even though I don't live at altitude and it's all built in beforehand. And then afterwards, people quick lay back down on that rather than just emptying their tank and saying, hey, I did well or I did not do well, but I, I worked my butt off. It's the end of the rant. Matt, have you been on this course? I can't tell if we lost Matt or myself. So I'm going to talk, Matt, as if we lost you. If I'm talking over you, I, I apologize. This is probably the flattest course out of the entire Savage Circuit. It might even be flatter than Florida, which is kind of an oxymoron but it's it's nothing but farm field farm field farm field and the grass surrounding farm fields so it is fast it is flat you can really open up and run there are very little man-made or uh, nature-made breakups in your running rhythm it's it's relatively good footing the entire time too so this is one that people are going to be able to rip up rather than be separated by terrain early all right, Lee. So who do we recognize here in the start line, uh, Bracken and Lee? Right away in red, that's Robbie Gindrich. He okay. is kind of a lesser known name, but he's he's very fast. He's a good athlete, and he's done well in a few other races. He hasn't put it together yet in Savage. He's been tripped up by the rigs. But today he'll be one of the two or three top guys there, so I expect him to make a little bit longer into the race before he potentially gets tripped up. And then we saw Air Force Ken in the background. He's – would he be the elder statesman of the sport now? At, at this Savage point, abs absolutely. Absolutely. He's been in around as – he's been around as long as you and I have. He's one of the earliest – you know, back in the day, if there was a Florida race, he would win. If there was a Georgia race, Yuri would win. I mean, that's kind of a – yeah, all the way back. Yeah, so th there's nothing this man's going to see that he hasn't seen before. And Van Tran is here and – I would say he, those three, Robbie, Van, and 
and Air Force Ken there, Ken Crigliano are the are the three class of the field right now. But it, it's, we've talked about wide open races. This is a wide open race. This is one where if you've been waiting to, to jump in there and, and steal an axe, today is your day to take an axe. Yeah, it's it's definitely this is going to be going to be the most the most wide open of the races we've done, right? Yes, it is. Um, USA jersey there, cut off. Uh, I'm I'm gonna feel terrible. I'm gonna have to reach out and message him right afterwards. I've been sitting here for 30 seconds, blanking on his name. Uh, he's got compression socks on on the left side of our screen, stage right. But he's going to take it out very quickly. He likes to get out, and he'll be in the mix for a while as well. Okay, we're going to get ready to go here. Any moment now, we're going to start by running right under the old uh, A-frame. Ooh, makes for a good shot. And they're off. Yeah, so Robbie Gingrich getting right out in the Is lead. It Gingrich? Is it Gingrich or Gingrich? Do we know? Uh, I like Gingrich, but it's probably Gingrich. He's a, He's an athletic guy I believe he played small college basketball um if and he also had some some 400 meter 800 meter track in his background and just came around to running and now has been super super consistent we're talking like a year year and a half of not missing a workout so he's confident he's fit and savage is the one thing that keeps betraying him he's won a couple local races some smaller OCRs, but these Savage rigs have been getting in. Getting a first look at the women's field here as the men do their thing. Pretty thin, would you say? Yeah. Morgan Schultz here. Amy Padgett. Oh, Morgan. All right. Yeah. Morgan gets a lot of love from the ORM team. She helped our coverage in Chicago for High Rocks. So this, is, is, this could be her first Savage. It's an exciting um, moment for her. Very exciting moment. And then who else do we have here today? We do not see Chrissy. There's AJ Samples right there. Did yeah, I say so AJ? There Ashley we go. Samples is here. We there's, have. There's Chris. Yep. Amy Pagic. We have um, Jessica Dodge, I believe, is here. She's All someone right. who is is pretty successful on the local scene and does well at the you know, usually is podium mean top three, top five in her OCRWC age group, which translates well to a savage race. So the women's field has, would you say tighter competition? What was the, what would the word would you use? I think it's about the same a minus an air force can a wide open competition. Uh, well, you just named five people and when we got to the men's field. I couldn't name two. So I feel like the women's is different. It's probably deeper. I say so there are probably five that could all win it. Where on the men's side, there's probably two or three who could win it. Right. So we're showing you the women's start as the men are still kind of tooling around. I'm looking at the back of Lee's car. So we're just going to stay here on the women. Morgan looking tall. <laughs> yeah, she's really worked on her height since the last time we've seen it. <laughs> These are the things I notice. These are the things I notice here. So, Matt, so, can you t can you speak to her height and how that'll help her today? Well, that that uh, the belly of the beast might be trouble. She might have to work extra hard on staying vertical. You, they seem to have gotten rid of the teeter tuber, which was Bracken's uh, Achilles' heel, kept you off the podium. I remember. Kept Did they get rid of that from... obstacle? They still have it, as far as I know. That's right. I, I don't own an axe because of that teeter tuber. Here we go. So Van Tran's out in the lead. How can you tell? That's impressive. Matt, I'm a connoisseur of a running form. Is it form? Is it shorts? Yeah, he always wears uh, dark split shorts. He um, just has a, a different form, and he leaps off the top of things because he's a little ninja. Okay. We are having some issues here with Lee's phone. I'm not sure why. We're in someone's backyard there. Definitely in someone's backyard as we go through. I almost called it tight squeeze, but it's not called tight squeeze. Oh, Van's, so, Van's running aggressive. What do you know about Van? Is this normal for him to go out hard and heavy? 
It's hard to really say because, and I say this with all due respect, he's rarely the favorite in the race that he's in. Okay. So I don't know if I've seen him lead races because usually there's there's someone that's uh, you know one notch above him in the hierarchy at the race. Maybe he's in a different place in fitness right now, or maybe this is just I believe I'm the best one here, and I'm gonna end people's races early, which is a smart move in OCR. But he's already opened up a 50, 60 meter gap just since the last obstacle. We don't think Ken is worried about that, though, I'm guessing. We don't, but we also don't know. Ken's as as steady and reliable as he is. We never know these days what he's doing in training. Well, he – remember the last time we saw him, he was third, fourth, and then got hurt on the um, carry obstacle. <laughs> yeah, he's he's one of those people that when he's fit or when he's in the race – you know, you'll, I'll, I'll take him up against almost anyone. But these days, as OCR isn't his focus, we just, we're not sure how he's come back from whatever injury that was and what he's doing in, in training. Who do we, we, who do we got right behind him there, uh, Lee? If you, can you tell? Or whoever's holding Lee's phone because Lee's driving? They're starting to pack up back there. We had someone running with Van, and now they've backed up, and now there's probably three or four people within. You have a clear second place, and then you've got a little pack there. So hopefully they're able to get that Peloton rolling and make a move on Van. Well, you said this is the flattest one, so maybe Van, maybe Van knows that and is like, dude, I'm just going to go for it. It's the it's the flattest one. Nothing's going to slow me down. Yeah. No, I, I don't know for sure anymore, but I, I think he's a Texas boy, so he's he's not – unaccustomed or to flat running. Maybe this just suits his strengths right now. The thing about Van is that he was always better at obstacles than he was at running. And if he has made a move in his running fitness department, then this is a really solid race for someone like him. Matt, do you remember Van from the Battle Frog days? Uh, I uh, the name has always been familiar. Like, what was he? A lot of second and thirds at Battle Frog behind Atkins and whoever else. Uh, he was just always there. He was one that just never failed stuff. So even back then, he was an optical special, obstacle specialist. Okay, let's see what we can get in yeah. second here. That, there's Ken. Yep. And then there's Red Shorts. Uh, sorry, it's Robbie. <laughs> Red Shorts. That's Jared. We don't. Sorry to disrespect your name, buddy. Okay, no, that was Robbie. Robbie. No, I know, but Red Shorts. Oh, oh is gotcha, guy. gotcha. He's yeah. Jared Flank. Is that Jason West there coming through? I don't know. Do you think the Discord's Carl Fallish is at this race? He is not at this race. Ooh, three, three, to, three wide. I'm sorry to tell you that the running public zone, Carl Fallish, has a, has a nasty sprained ankle right now, Matt. All right, we're getting our first look at the women there. Look like I saw Chris, but it wasn't enough to tell. What is the name of this obstacle right here? I call it Tight Squeeze. What's it called? I'm going to go solo here. So there's Morgan. Morgan looking like she's in third behind AJ. And was that Chris in the lead? Kayla, was that Chris in the lead? No, there's Chris. Who's in the lead? Chris, he's in fourth. Who's in who's, Who's number one? Oh, you sound horrible. Sorry about that. I guess squeeze play. Thank you. Squeeze have... play. What did I call it? Main squeeze. Squeeze play. Thank you. Squeeze play. Rachel, if you want to stay online. We need Rachel as the third member of the booth. Actually, that'd be great. So Chrissy's running strong. Her stride looks great. And we've talked about this before, but when you get a pack of of people up here. You've got three women up here right now. Someone always gets spit out. So she's she's in prime position to, to play spoiler. And I'd assume Ashley Samples is up here. Now you've got well, Ashley on the right, Morgan on the left. Who's on the – sorry, Morgan in the middle. Who's on the left? I love it, man. We've like three three wide here in the lead. This never yeah. happens. We're trading paint early on here. Oh, Rubin is racing, my friend. Um, Morgan's interesting. She just – oh, we have an acceleration here. 
Someone decided they don't like it anymore. Morgan just spent the last what, 16, 20 weeks uh, rebuilding from injury and training high rocks. So now, now we get to see exactly how a high rocks prep will will get you prepared for for a savage race. So of these three women, and then if we count the fourth right behind her, she's the one that spent the absolute least amount of time doing anything OCR related. She's a monster talent. She's extremely strong right now. And she's probably running the least out of all these women. So it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out. When we get to that, uh, you couldn't remember main squeeze squeeze play. I'm not going to remember the, is it cornhole? Scornhole. Have, scornhole. When they get to things like scornhole and uh, pedal to the metal, things like that, she's going to, she hasn't seen them before, but she should be able to, with her power, make a move there. Pedal for the metal. Pedal for the metal. It took me a long time, too. I didn't get it. They're all so creative and punny that you got to get it right. I didn't know. I didn't know they were calling Funky Monkey Revolution because the it, the wheels revolve. It took me like a year, and I was like, "Oh, the revolution!" They're operating on a different a different level than you and I, man. Which model are the orange VJs on the shoe wall? Oh, those aren't supposed to be up there. These are the he who must not be named shoe. Okay, hang on. I I really want to. Who look, can we can we go back? Let's go back to the women here. So, uh, Ashley far right, Morgan in the middle. Who is that on the left? I'm, I apologize because Chris was back there, wasn't that Chris in fourth? It looks like a grit sports. It's what's her? Bra. It's what's her name? Please help me out, field. I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm embarrassed. Yes, Chris. Chris is in first place. Okay, so who was fourth? Fourth is uh, Chrissy. Chrissy. Chris and Chrissy. There we go. Thank you oh, bro. very much. Thank Chris you so keeps, much. Chris keeps accelerating into obstacles and around turns. And that's a, that's a sign either of someone who is intentionally playing that I'm going to steal time from people's game or someone who's actually feeling good. It's right. hard to really fake those things. Right. So Chris Roglowski and Chrissy McFarland, two right. different people. So Roglowski in first. And, and you're starting to see the obstacle – a, acumen, and B, just time spent doing it. Morgan's running very strong, but she's losing time on every obstacle because she just hasn't touched obstacles in so long. I'm still loving that we've got this battle going on as they pass some of the slower men. Hi, slower men. Yeah, this this is a, a unique battle here because you have two women who are very good at obstacles up front. Then you have Morgan, who's a former D1 runner in third, and she's going to have to continually yo-yo her way back up because she's going to keep seeing obstacles that she's never done before, and she'll have to take that moment coming into every obstacle and figure out exactly what she's supposed to be doing. And that is draining. That wears on you over time. They have to continually accelerate back up. So no, like I'm out running them, but I just keep giving up time. Didn't want to interrupt there. Sorry. So it looks like Ken's taking the lead, followed by... Red pants still followed, in second. Followed by red pants. Well, who was in first then? I thought that was Van that we just saw in second. You sure? Van's in first. No, Van's gone. We didn't even see him on the obstacle. Okay, thank you. Air Force Ken doesn't panic in races. Yeah, he's he's a vet. He's been around, and he knows how these races finish up. And he's seen probably dozens of times over the years someone leading out who he doesn't expect to be the one who's going to win. And he's seen them come back, whether it be from just fitness or from failing out on obstacles. So I would doubt he's in panic mode yet, especially knowing that that finishing gauntlet is a, a real one. Unfortunately, uh, Van, <laughs> if I had to put my money on one person in this race going clean through every obstacle, it'd be Van. And that that low that no blah, 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 low net there that we're talking that fishing net that's going to benefit Van because he's probably the shortest guy in the top ten, so he's going to have the least trouble getting under that thing. Remember when Hard Charge would do the split screen after they went over the obstacle of how long it took each person? So great! <laughs> I know. I was just thinking we could do that for that obstacle. Like, let's see who got up the wall the fastest. So there's Chrissy, correct? No, that's 
That's yes, that's Chrissy. Chrissy dropped down into fourth a few seconds behind. The top three are literally a half second apart. You know, I've I've grown to really like the way she competes over the course of this season because she's not someone. A lot of these these women aren't people I ever get to see race because if I'm at the race, we don't get to see their their competition since they go off five minutes behind us. But she keeps her form together, start to finish. She no matter what place she's in, she keeps her form steady and she pumps her arms. I like watching her race. Whenever I get tired, I always try to remember to pump my arms back. And that's what they tell you. If you start getting tired, pump those arms. Yeah. She she leads with those arms. It's really easy to run your best beautiful confident form when you're winning. But when yes. top three are pulling away Sorry it's tough that. to stay on that, and she does a great job of staying on it. And I think that's part of the reason why that she can make late race closes on people is because she never, she never backs off. She's always running hard so that when that opportunity presents itself, she's she's still in attack mode. Morgan has great form though. Look at that! Look at that girl run. You can see why she was a D one runner. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. She, she was made. She was made. Her body was born to to get out there and turn her feet over and run fast. I don't know what my body was made to do, Bracken. I think, I think it's hard to pick just one thing. <laughs> First male approaching Swornal. So we're starting to see some separation here. Van has stretched it out. Let's see how many shots it takes him. Whoa. I'm going to go with one. The over under was uh, correct for you, Matt. Did you start and the clock? Did you start the clock? I, I didn't, but let's call it 10 seconds now. That type of thing seems insignificant, but for Ken to make his way back into it, he needs, he needs a little bit of help here. Are we approaching a minute? No, we're approaching 29, 30 seconds. Okay. But he just lost another second or two there. Probably he's a basketball player. He better. Right, who's for, who's fourth that I thought was Van? Who is this in fourth? Do we know Lee? Who's now really costing himself valuable seconds? Hey man, what's your name? Marquez Green. Marquez Green. Okay. Thank We've you. had Marquez at a Savage before, I believe. Marquez Green. You got this. Come on, first try. A lot of dudes just using all arms because it's not heavy enough for them to realize that they could actually benefit more by using their lower tranches. Tranches. Or haunches, tranches. I like tranches, man. Let's go with tranches. All right. Let's see Morgan here on... Uh, this is a place Morgan will take back a little bit of time. I don't know. She's looking pretty winded there. I don't know. She's Did winded, you? but she... Well, on the pull itself, she made up a little bit of time and now giving it back on a walk back. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Look how quick. See? Oh, wow. Chrissy with a heck of a performance on that one. See, look, she's running. Morgan was like slowly walking. Maybe Morgan just thought, okay, I'll catch my breath here. Possibly. This is also, I think, the longest Morgan's been running unbroken <laughs> in a long time. And with these these type of obstacles, they're they're absolutely different than a high rocks. I mean, that's that's self evident, but they're they're quick little daggers that stab you, or you have to kind of explode up into things, get over a wall, get under something where high rocks, you can just get into a working rhythm. There's no working rhythm at a savage. You're running hard or you're exploding into obstacles. So we're 30 minutes into, no, we're not. Sorry. We're 34 <laughs> minutes into this broadcast. So that means we're 25 minutes into the race for the men. 19. Eight o'clock, right? Yes. Yeah. 19 minutes in. Yeah, that would be good. Just add, just subtract what the hour is. There we are. It was 13 seconds when you said 10. Steve Best. Thank you, Dr. Best. So 33. 
were saying on on Ken was behind the lead there. Man, these 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 listeners and watchers sure keep us accountable. We appreciate yeah, it. What is this? Yeah, what is this obstacle? So a low crawl. Except nobody's Bunga, crawling. Baby. We got to make these people get on their get on your knees. Shoot a hose at them. Make it the old days. Okay, so this brings something up. Everyone in the last uh, televised race that happened last Saturday, uh, the smart ones did this. They The barbed wire was not crisscrossed back and forth the whole way. There were just lines every eight feet or so, and so people would go duck under, stand up and run, duck under. What's your take on how that should be approached? I mean, don't you want to stay low and get through it the quickest? Wouldn't that be the move? Well, that was the really quickest. Wor- unless you're worried about your hands getting muddy. I mean, is that is that the only reason you would do that? Well, being able to stand up and run three steps rather than crawl three steps is always going to be quicker. And less taxing. So is it is it spear to the obstacle? You're supposed to stay down and crawl the whole time? Or is well, it on the race to make sure that there's something to be under the whole time? I- there's so many better debates to have. I don't know that I want to get in that one. I mean, I think it's it's like Spirit of the Obstacles different. Like, mm, I, I I don't know, dude. I, I don't know what the answer is. Well, we have to accommodate um, people of all different sizes, and we also have a ruckway where people have backpacks, so we can't like put it, you know, six inches off the ground. Oh, I, I, I meant in. more frequency where they stand up in between, and like we could see that they were jogging in between. Is that acceptable from a racing standpoint? Yeah, that's something that would be hard to uh, officiate. That's what I'm saying. Is like, how do you officiate? Like, just yelling at people to get down? Yeah, I don't know. That, that's why I asked. I, I wasn't sure what the the race director's take on that kind of thing is. Well, my take is uh, it's pretty exhausting to constantly be standing up and touching down. If you really want to burn that much energy to gain an extra three seconds, I mean, I. I'm uh, not going to hate on you for it. Uh, okay. As long as you go, make sure you go under and not over the wires, I'll settle. Chris is running strong. She's going to catch a lot of men today. This makes me want to go out for a run. It's a hot day, too. It's humid. This makes me want to watch a race. <laughs> Boom. I always cringe when they back away afterwards, knowing there's more med balls on the ground behind them. What do you mean? That they're going to turn their their foot and. Can we stay and see where the second place is, Caleb? Can we stay here for a minute? Yeah, Ashley, a second. It's about 20 seconds. Nice. Ooh, she Ooh, got a friendly the- bounce. <laughs> 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 Did you watch much of the uh, the finals, Brad? Oh, yeah. Well, it was Milwaukee Bucks, man. Uh, Pfizer, Pfizer Forum is only about yeah. four or five miles from my house. Hey, yeah. Is that where they play? Pfizer Forum? Nice. Pfizer Forum. Morgan straight in. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was my hometown team win, winning the finals. We were watching it all. Congratulations. I I didn't play as big of a part as you'd imagine. I know that you can still run a mile and dunk. That appears to be an important thing for you to do. <laughs> well, it's it's important only because it exists. <laughs> There's a few people that have a we have an ongoing conversation to see who can keep that streak going the streak itself but the two things itself don't matter much it's just the fact that it's they've been happening so now All it's right. a so streak. i want to i want to stay your friend for a long time i'm gonna say the first year you can't dunk anymore 59 59 matt Dude, that that's too be, much oh yeah but I, I love your optimism because i'm 49 and i still feel fresh and you're you've got a better you've done more work on yourself what do you think? Fifty-five? I'm forty-nine. Look at me. My goal is my goal is, would be to dunk at forty. At forty? Yeah. I'm forty-nine years old. Look at me. How's your explosion these days? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. My After Thai are, food, maybe, but my hops are unreal. All I know is that I'm already starting to lose a bit of vertical. Okay. So 
that that decline when it happens it happens quick. Okay. so my goal I was, was but see i always forget day. i always forget you're 10 years younger than me I, for a second i thought you're my age but i always forget just because you're yeah. bald <laughs> thank you so, rose yeah, also I, rose also got very mad at me for calling her older just because she's been around a long time okay what are we looking at here what obstacle is this lee what is this i can't see the whole obstacle this is ah, rig yes. over water it's a rig type um on a wooden frame I'll show you now. Van is approaching. Okay, Caleb, you're completely dark, buddy. Is that your referee in the water there? He no, is he's uh, just... checking out the water. Hey, we got participants coming through. Just a heads up. He's just harvesting duckweed. There's no bells. Make me cross. This, this rig is going to get some people. We haven't Everything. seen a rig over water in a minute, have we? No, everything's hanging. Everything gives a little bit. Oh, look at the lead. What happened here? It's gone. 30 seconds just evaporated, and I wonder what they hit. Do we have any intel there? Um, so during the corn maze, the uh, ground was tilled really fine. So mm. it's almost like a powdered flower, and uh, Van lost a lot of steam in there. So I, I ran this course couple of years ago and that corn maze it's constantly turning you're always turning and you have to intentionally reaccelerate in and out of every single sharp turn and they're all sharp they're all right angles over and over and over and i i could see there yeah where if you had someone come in where robbie still plays a lot of basketball and ken has run this course many times if you have someone who's good at getting in and out of turns you could you could make up 20 or 30 seconds just by running And now blood's in the water, Matt. Yes, absolutely. That's what I was about to say. When you can see it, when you can see the person, it's kind of, it's it's a game changer. You can feel it. I learned this myself, Bracken, from my recent battle with uh, with Josh Chase. Actually, you had a battle with Josh Chase. I did. We 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 did a we did a last man standing race. Morgan looks good through here. She's not done one of these, to my knowledge, but she just moved through as smooth as any of the women. Well, little bit of a slip there, but yes. And the dismount here is going to be the um, – there we go. She looked like an old pro doing it. It's too bad she can't hear us. I'd cheer for her. I'm a is Morgan she, fan, Matt. I know we're supposed to be impartial, but I'm a fan. It's okay. I, I root for people sometimes too. Are you, are you coaching her? You can be honest. Not anymore. We stopped um, after Chicago so that she could go all in on the OCR Dream Team. She's using one of their coaches now. I get it. But I support that move. Yeah, what are we looking? What are we looking at here? Who's Ka Who's Callan? Callan. Hi. Uh, I think the, the N is next to the B on the keyboard. Okay, turn that camera sideways, Caleb. I love when people listen. That's just this. You know, I have kids; they never listen. So it's nice when someone actually listens the first time you ask to do something. <laughs> I saw correctly. It looked like Ken was gapping Robbie a little bit. But. They, yeah, he passed him essentially on that on that rig on that rig over water. Right, but on the on the subsequent run, it looked like Robbie might have been losing some steam. Now I raced him at a night OCR race a while back, and he is one of those guys, very much like Ken, where when he believes he's in the mix, he's got another gear at the end of a race. So I am interested. Now it looks like he's back up. Looks like he's made a repass and he's running Van down. He, he's he's a guy that if he smells the blood in the water, he's he's got that extra closing speed that some people don't have. So yeah, in this in this last person standing race that we did. Uh, Josh was leading every lap and it's really not about leading because we all start over every lap, but I just, I knew he was slowing down a little bit. And once mm -hmm. I passed him, um, I dropped the hammer. Did you let him know? I found an extra gear. Well, I, I think the action spoke for itself. Did you also speak for yourself or did you, did you just let it be? No, I, I let it be. 
and then I celebrated when he dropped out the next lap. This is again. Nice. This is not. To, this is not to disparage Josh. This is to just. No, we can disparage Josh. Chase. No, it was more. It was more about. I talked about Bracken. I want to talk to you more about this later. Waking up something inside me. I don't think my competitive juices have been flowing in a while, and it got me really excited. So I think I want to figure out a way to do that more. I like that. I like that a lot, man. I think everyone needs to be in touch with that side from time to time. Now, Van's in the toughest position in sports right here, I believe, which is you were having a great competition. You were well out in the lead, and then you got caught. It's Wait a like minute. All we already, that work. They, they have this obstacle twice. Lee, can you speak to this? We already saw this obstacle. Yeah, baby. We got two block parties and two barn doors. Love it. So the worst part in sports is two guys at your heels. Is that what you're saying, Bracken? I think is getting caught. Because everything is on your side. You're winning. You're pulling ahead. You know you're the class of the field. And then suddenly you get caught. And it just kind of exposes any weaknesses mentally you have going. And you've lost your momentum. And you realize you're vulnerable. And it's also like I put in all that work to get up here. And it was gone in the course of a quarter mile. That's that's it. Just it really wears on you. So for him to get back on the accelerator and fight again shows that a he's mentally tough and b he's still not physically trashed. He lost time, but it wasn't because he was dying. It was because he did something not as well as what they did. I believe Caleb has lost his uh, gimbal. He's gimbal free now. A little, little shaky here. It's all right though, buddy. Hang in there, Caleb. Sorry, Caleb. This is the, the born identity style of, of filming a race. <laughs> we got our shaky cam coverage. It's more uh, visceral. I went back and revisited the born movies as two, three, and four got confusing for me, but now I think I'm pretty clear on the difference. I think they ha- they hold up well. But but seriously, every movie is like, oh, Treadstone. Oh wait, now it's called Blackwater, but it's still Treadstone. Black like, Briar, I believe. Black Briar, right. thank you. It's all right. I just I just want to be movie accurate on this on this show okay so we've got a pretty crowded rig over water as our lead woman goes through no problem i think this guy i think our does our scuba diver have a dip in i'm not sure what that was (laughs) this is the type of coverage you can't get anywhere else this is what you get we're gonna get boots on the ground and see if we can't find out if he is in fact dipping Listen, he can save a life if he needs to. That's all that matters. Is that a failure? Somebody failed that obstacle. That was. You better go back and try it again. Now they're floating around in his tobacco juice. Now, see, that was gross. I was funny. You were gross. Bracken, know the line. Come on. Are you saying he did not spit in there one time throughout <laughs> his, his pre-race check? You, I'm muting you in about two minutes. You're really going downhill with this thing. All right, let's get back to the win. <laughs> oh. Nobody wants to see that. Are you are you growing some facial hair, Bracken? Been working on it for twenty two years. No, I just uh, I don't grow much facial hair, Matt. There's no need. It's it's not it's it's not aerodynamic. So I've convinced my body not to. Whoa! Do you see that big old swing? That was a big swing. So there's been a, a pass made now. Chrissy has moved past Morgan slightly. So this right. will be a good test for Morgan. I, I don't know when the last time she did a rig of this sort. She's down at the bottom of this rope, which is a tough place to be. Oh, she's, she's powerful, weak. but yeah, yeah, she's. Yeah, start I mean, that, that one over. That was a mature decision right there. Correct. I concur. Don't get your ego hung up. You got to get up a little bit higher on that, yeah, on that I think, rope. I think she learned that. It looks like she learned that. She could feel it. She could feel if I try to transition, I'm going to slip right off. She's starting up high. I'm going to say this is not bode well for the later rigs, though, for her. If she's struggling no, on this one, I think she might have met her match. As you said, she hasn't done these in a while. I believe she's she's found it. She's found her limit. And that's all it is. I mean, she's athletic. She is powerful. 
and she's inexperienced right now. That's all, that's all this is. So she's gonna get a quick on-course education today and then she'll come back next time. I think she would do well to just grab that, that rope in her right arm since she appears to like to lead with her left and just swing right out to the, to the ring. I wouldn't bother wrapping here. It's a, it's a big energy drainer. I would just kind of touch and go and get to that ring as soon as possible. We're going to go ahead and yeah, yep, there, she there, goes. there she goes. Look at that Bracken from your lips to there we go. Look at what yeah. a difference. What a difference. But it's got to go quick, quickly, quickly, quickly. Yeah. There she is. Oh, oh good oh, save Morgan. Wow, nice job. She but as we it. said, but as we said, if you're uh, struggling top, on that one, top three males approaching Colossus. Then yeah, his lead. So I'm, I'm hoping he didn't get uh, it's a war of attrition. turned away for a second. But he looks like they're back. All right, they're all on the walls. Now, do we have? Is Van no longer in second? Is our friend Gingrich? Yep. Now in first, going up to, and he's hurting. You could see he had his stooped over running form going. He's always a little rounded back, but he's hurting right now. These guys are all in it. They are sitting right in the midst of it. I, I, you know, I, I kind of want to go back to that thing with Morgan because it seems so simple, but look at what a difference it made, right? To have the yeah. awareness to go, wait a minute, I, I don't have to do this thing that's right in front of me. And it's hard, right? You get tunnel vision, you get race brain. And go, oh, if I could do this, I just saved myself all this angst. It was actually all kind of phenomenal. You don't see that very often where she realized it's smarter to go back and readjust. Otherwise, she would have been stuck on there, blowing out her grip, and then she would have submerged when she dropped in, and then you're done. Right, so. but I'm talking about also the idea of you finally telling, you were saying skip the first rope, go to the first ring, that part yeah. too. Yeah, and I'm saying that it, it shows how aware she is as an athlete because she learned on the fly really quickly. It was easy for us to sit here and say, yeah, this is what you should do. And it didn't take her long to feel it. So we are 37. Look at, look at Van. Look at Van compared to, to Robbie already. He's taken a lot of time back on this. And Ken, too. And Ken, too. Wow. Look at Ken. Ken. Woo! Oh! oh. Is that a now failure? That's, Does he have to do it again? I assume that's a failure. Well, there's no ref. There's no nobody saying anything. Hold on. I'm here. Hey, man. So what happened? You fell in the water? I got the rope. All right, I'm going to need you to start over again. All right, so... On, you got this, dude. That's unfortunate because I was about to say that he's going to win this race. He's just so much faster through a lot of these obstacles that I thought he was going to stay right up there and that Robbie would have a slip up towards the end. Well, I, I, I do want to say this is... Savage, you, you got to have a ref here. Like, what if you weren't there, Lee? Like, like where's the... There we go. We got to have a ref here next time. Right here, but they're distracted. It's all right. We got <laughs> okay. it. And, okay. you, and you know what that was? That was Ken. That was Ken's. Uh, Ken gets the, the assist on that one. Because, because he saw him out of the corner of his eye? Yeah, and Ken passed him. And Van's probably not expecting to get passed on that. And he realized, I got to quick get off this thing. And he just either let his eyes not focus on where he landed or he rushed the dismount. But that's all on Ken right there. He didn't, Van, Van didn't fail that. He just, he, he slipped up. He, that, that was not a physical failure. That was a mental failure. Van could go back and forth across that 10 times if you wanted to, but it just shows that when you're tired and you're in the middle of a race, things, things hit a little differently. Mm -hmm. So they are approaching Sawtooth, and then Lumberjack Lane to the next couple. How long is that Lumberjack Lane, Lee? Do we know? Here's Carl. It's called the Steve Hammond. Well, like people are, I know people are going to say, hey, you called Spartan on that. You need to call Savage on that. So I did. There you go. I know Savage is our host today, but I just wanted to, uh, you know, keep it real here, guys. Uh, okay, so here we are. So, Lee, we couldn't hear you if you were – I don't know if you are muted. How long is our lumberjack today, buddy? You're still muted. There we go. Nope, now you're muted again. 
Who has the advantage here? Robbie, Van, and Ken. Well, we had a long one. Remember, we had a long one last time. We still haven't heard you, Lee, letting us know how long this bad boy is. Straight ahead. Loop straight. Um, so if I'm on mic now, this one is yes. 0.3. It's a little bit shorter. Um, and by, by recent standards, it's actually quite small. Uh, but there's a low call in as well. 0.3, though, is still pretty legit. It's got a low crawl in it, you said? Savage likes yes, to do that. Right. It's got a low crawl and a little bit of an upward sloping hill towards the end. <clears throat> I can't stand it during the race when they do it, but in principle, I really like when they, they've done it with with rec bigs before, and they've done it with this where you have to take it through there. And I, I like having a crawl in the middle of a carry. It just adds a, another element to what can become kind of a – a mundane obstacle where you just grab the log and run. How do you like this? Look at how relaxed I am for him. <laughs> I love it. You don't get very many chances to do something without your upper body and your lungs on course. So any chance you get to, to recoup just a few percentage, I like it. And that's also the luxury of being in the lead. So she has an entire obstacle gap now, which is always huge. That means she's earned a free retry or two if she needs one in the future. Well, eight, I'd say one retry, two retries, you're going to get caught. Maybe. She's, she's a full obstacle ahead, though. There's Chrissy. She moved into second now. Yeah, Chrissy's – I would say Chrissy has won any race she's gotten on the podium. She, she probably got in the last obstacle, right? Yeah, she, she's a closer, which I like. And she's using a different technique of what you typically see. Whoa. It's kind of accepted that you get on the edge and you go, you you scoot your feet from 12 down to 6 position. And she's in the middle going from 6 up to 12. I have not seen someone do it in the middle. I've always They always tell us go to one, pick, pick, pick a side and go double on the side. Not the way that Ashley's doing it. Yeah. I always pick a side. I've never seen someone too. go in the middle. Interesting. I can't say, though, that any of them make more sense than the others. It, feel, it feels certainly faster to me when I've gone on one side. I've never tried this middle. Maybe I will next time. Yeah. Fall Savage yeah. or something. Who knows? I like, I like though, that there's still, there's still a little bit of mystery to it. But maybe she gets rewarded for trying a new technique. All right. Coming up on Wheel World. Oh, we're in the finishing gauntlet here. That's what I'm saying. Last four obstacles, last quarter mile. Will you be able to keep up with them, Lee? How's your how's your foot speed? <laughs> hey, my foot speed for a short amount of time is still what it used to be. Can you dunk? So, <laughs> no, I don't have any jumping power. Lee, did you race in high school and or college? Yeah, I did track and uh, martial arts. Okay. Yes, oh, he is that. qualified to uphold the rules of the course. Oh, yeah. He'll put them down if they're not paying attention. Hey, man, I've run pro at a lot of different uh, – I'll tell you what. I was talking martial arts, arts not racing. I meant you can be the, the cooler of the course, the Patrick Swayze. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, we've got a battle. Here Ken's we go. fly through this. Look at this. Oh, a little bit of a slip, but Ooh. Ken wants this. Oh, Ken, he just crotched the, the strut. Ken definitely wants this. Here we go. Here we go. This I mean, final my money's on Ken. Ken. Ken is absolutely ruthless. He'll turn himself inside out and take chances at the end of a close race. So my money's on Ken. I, I, Robbie, I love you, but he's remember, dealing with no the grizzled the vet. Board. No feet on the blue board. I think we're seeing experience versus not experience here. Yeah. In a big yeah, this way. This is I've done 30 savages versus I've done three or five, however much it is. Oh, yeah. He's done. Oh, man. Don't you feel that for him, Bracken? Yeah. To see that reaction? Because now yeah, we're looking miserable. at now we're looking at possible third when second or first was in sight. This is a tough mental adjustment right here. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and call him the winner. He's going to go over these walls. Your winner is Air Force Ken, his 17th or so. But let's stay here as we could have some carnage. Still no van, but he's uh, he's he's getting right back on it. And it's it's that tough mental adjustment to go from like in a split second from I'm I'm going for a win I'm going for a win I failed all right readjust everything now is just about taking second place so whatever I have to do to get second oof oh his arms are trashed right now now the the good thing is that this cheese is downhill slightly but the bad thing is is you have. <laughs> A flying squirrel coming up behind him. Who's well, gonna... and, right, and then we all have other men too. We this is one of those situations where we could have a brand new uh, third place. We could. Have you seen a glimpse of fourth place at all, Marquez oh, Green? Wow. Well, there goes that prediction of Van Trans, the one I'd put money on to never fall off any obstacle. Okay, this is so, this is tough here because you get to the bottom and you want to grab something as soon as you see it, but the smarter yeah. move is to get back up a little higher. If Gingrich makes this, he is our second place dude. Let's see what he learned on the first time. All right, he's a he's oof. You're there, but you're trashed. It's a terrible feeling. He's got to move. He's got to double up to that hand grip. There you go. Oh no. Oh, the agony. Oh boy, we feel you, buddy. We Although feel now's, you. Now is not the time because he's got third place on the line here. I, I know, but come on, now he's got to just wait it out. I mean, what's the point of going again? Yeah, he has to hope that Vasquez is that correct? Wow, Van, this isn't over. This is not over. Marquez Green now Green. in second position. Marquez. We're gonna need names on third and on the the next few men that that show up here. Once again, the rig doing its thing, and I love that it's every time you guys make it different. Like it's not just like, oh, well, that rig was hard. Like, great, let's throw something new at you again. That was good. What Marquez did there. What did he do? He he used that the stripper pole to to just get to the the rope rather than treat the pole as something I need to fully be on. He just kind of like how Morgan touched the rope to get to the ring. He did that with the pole. Sometimes hanging obstacles are there right in grasp and they're less efficient to even go on. There it is. And there goes Marquez. Now, the other thing to notice is that Robbie's a little bit taller and that was part of the problem is that he's struggling and his feet, he has to work extra hard. He's thinking about it, whereas the slightly shorter athlete didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's taller and heavier, so he's going to bend the cheese board more. Oh, his grip's just gone. Now we've got we've got two I'm men surprised. in. Surprised with Van here. It's like I said, he was the, the battle frog grip champion. I wonder if he's just not been doing the same type of work. He can still salvage it. There he goes. Well, that's heartbreaking for Robbie. It really is. <sighs> First place with 50 meters to go in the race. And now off the podium. And, as, and now you're – go ahead. As Bracken says, that's why we love obstacle racing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If we if we wanted it just to be decided by running, we'd, we'd stick to road running or tr the trails or the track. But this is what makes it tough. Now, see, he didn't climb very high up the net, so now he's stuck in this weird low position, and he can still get through this, but it's it's kind of a tenuous position. But what I was going to say right right prior is that now we're getting to that stage of, of athlete coming in who they are not the strongest runners, but these are the people that spend a lot of time in the gym, a lot of time at the Ninja Warrior gyms, right. and these are the grip specialists coming through. So the longer you wait, the more likely you're about to have someone blow through the rig behind you. Caleb, we're looking for the ladies, or does Bo have them? We got we got three cams, and we got none on the ladies. Oh, there we go. Looks like somebody just pointed. Oh, 
I like the look of that water. Is that where the ladies are coming next, uh, Caleb? Are they? Are the, oh, the women approaching Sawtooth. Chrissy and Chris have already passed. Ashley's in third place at the moment and just slipped up right at the end. So that's her sitting it. down. You got it. You got it. She's taking her time. Do we have eyes on Morgan? Uh, I haven't seen Morgan yet. And it does not look like she's coming down Colossus at the moment. Okay. We got Colossus straight in the salty. Has Green, do we have confirmation? Is this his first podium at Savage? That, I definitely have not seen him on the podium yet. Oh, well, congratulations. Silver this medalist today. Silver this medalist today. Yeah. We, we said this is a day that someone can pop up and get their first podium. Apologize to, to Marquez if he already has one, but. As far as I know, it's his first. All right, still nothing over here, so we can watch. We can watch. Whoop! Where are you? Why are you leaving? Where are you going? <laughs> I thought we we're waiting for some women. Or what is the next obstacle we can catch the women at? Bo, can you go catch the women somewhere? If we're the lead women, I'm waiting for the girls at Wheel World. There's only one big obstacle between, and it's a little too far out. Okay, so, so uh, you I'll so know when the girls are coming. Yep. Okay. I'm waiting for them. Okay. What do you think led to this blowout of grip here? here You're asking Morgan. I have no idea. She's typically a pretty strong obstacler. I wonder what she hit prior to this that blew her 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 hands out already. Rig over Morgan. water was pretty pretty uh, grip intensive, I think. Oh yeah. Now Morgan spent a lot of time at rig over water. Smiling though. Let's get a little volume here. She just broke the rig. <laughs> I'm surprised to see Ashley struggling though. Ashley's seen this, you know, 20, 30 times. Sorry. Yeah, Ashley samples. Yeah. I wonder if she slipped once and got soaked. Yeah, and now she's just. All right, here we go. The old uh, Mappy Davis hand over hand instead of swinging method. That's the way I do it. <laughs> it just takes a lot longer. Yeah, I like that as well, actually. Is that how you do it? You don't swing? Going, going up, I, I go, I match. Going down, I try to swing it. What about, the old, what about the old going uh, backwards? I know a lot of people do that for the, for the going up. Yeah, if it's steeper, I like to. When it's shallower like this, I like going sideways, but... All right, so I this wouldn't. transition should be good for Morgan because she's taller. There we go. It's if you're yeah. shorter, that's a tr tough transition. Oh, get up there! She is strong. She really is. But she's lost momentum. Get downhill. Once you go downhill, gravity's going to help you a lot. There, there now she's skipping. There we go. Yeah, downhill. The last the skip is the dangerous one, though. Yeah, but you see these that big... Right there, oh, my. That last skip is the dangerous one. You start to anticipate the finish. Rushed. Well, uh, the, other, the, other thing, the other thing is those wide swings, and again, I know because I personally do that, that's like a lack of core issue, right? Like you got to have a solid middle to like get, like not have your body swing like that, right? I mean, it, right, it certainly coming. can be. Here comes She's, Chris Rogowski coming up to Wheel World, guys. Here we go, Chris. Oh, no, Morgan. She, Morgan has a powerful core. She has a good, strong core. But so, what would make that, you swing? What would make you swing so wildly side to side? Then, uh, she's she's just been on these rigs less. I think it's just a new movement right now. I don't know. I thought it was my core that had the issue when I would swing wildly like that. But yeah, I would think she's a lot stronger in the core. But that we saw the same thing with Van right there. You skip. You you go to dismount, and that last grip, you maybe lose focus on. But now yeah, I, got Chris. I got Chris on the rig. If you fall in, you want to get it over right away. She she did every single rung of it. She completed the entire hand requirements. It's Take just the, the, middle. the feet didn't the middle make it. So open? She's at her most depleted she could have possibly been and still fail. Wait, where's the you said she was on the rig there? Guys, we're, we're on Chris. Go to boat. Switch to boat. 
Oh, sorry. Lee's, here. Lee's there. You're good. Sorry. Sorry. She's in the middle. Oh, damn it. There we are. Chris is right in the middle here. She's clearing the bottom of the, what do they call it? Belly of the beast. The belly of the beast. There. See, so she, she went up a little bit higher. And now she's got some wiggle room. She can afford to, to go right here and just hang out for as long as she needs to before attacking this cheese board. But it looks like she's not. Yeah. Well, maybe I would, she is. There we go. I now think I'd loop an arm back through and wait for a minute. Oh, she's on. Got to keep those legs up. Oh, this this is the big one right there. Come on, come on. There she is. Big smile. There's your female winner. Oh, no, she's still got to do this. Sorry. She's got to do a uh, yank my chain. I don't think she'll struggle with this one bit today. All right. Let's just make sure. She got through that rig smoother than everyone except Ken. Good. You're good. Nice job, Chris. That was a strong performance today. <laughs> All you got to do is get it up there. When's the last time we saw someone go wire to wire? Did she go wire to wire? Yeah, we had that, that group of three for about the first half mile, and then she started making surges. Here comes Crispy to the rig. Guys, middle lane open for the ladies. Middle lane for the ladies. Right here. Yep, you got it. Yeah, it was Chrissy that was in fourth. Sorry, Chris was leading the yeah. entire race. You are correct. And she's held true to form. For, for she's, the yep. she's worked the whole time. She's kind of the steady one. Never gets too high, never gets too low. Just keeps working throughout and keeps finding herself on podiums. Did Robbie ever end up finishing? I, I don't know. And I feel for him. He's got a bright future, but this is a couple savage in a row that that ring's got him. I must, did I miss the last one? I don't recall the last one. So now she's hanging out per your instruction. <clears throat> yeah, because once you once you mount the cheese board, you're on, and you have to be engaged the whole time. This is your last your last pit stop. All right, so now she should probably Whoa. wait a few. Yeah, this this net really is nasty. So you have to use a lot of pull strength to get yourself through the bottom and back up high enough to move on. And even though we don't see a lot of people falling off on the net, the net's setting them up to fall off on the cheese board. And I don't care what anyone says. These cheese boards are getting broken in. They're getting more flexy as we go here throughout the year. Okay. That's my take. Got people rooting for Chrissy here. Flex is determined on where the chains are stretched. You don't think there's any, any give that they've broken in throughout the year? I'm sure they've gotten a little looser, but it's really all determined on by where the chains are. All right. That makes sense. Right, a, a straight line can only go so far. Yeah, and I like it for the record. And by the way, we have had engineers sign off on these. I've heard a lot of comments on them, uh, <laughs> so we're good to go. Uh, a straight I, line can only go so far, Bo Burton. I like the idea if it's true that they would get more flexible throughout the year because it's kind of like a a graduated course. You get through it the first time, yeah. and then it gets a little tougher the next time, and a little tougher the next time. Plus, if they play around with chain placement, I like that idea. I've heard rumors that Lee is like an NFL kicker, and he takes them back to the hotel and, and works them in, puts them in the microwave, rubs <laughs> solve on them. <laughs> a lot of solve rubbing. 
What would you, Bracken, what would you instruct someone you were coaching who this obstacle keeps eating their lunch race after race? What would you give them? What would you give them a dose of in training? This feeling right here. This, y- Yancey Culp talked about it when he came on our, our podcast for an episode. He talked about the idea that you've got to get to the point in training where you don't want to get back on the bar. Where you stand there and think, oh, I don't even want to re-grip that pull-up bar or that rig or whatever you have at your disposal. Because this is the point you get to in the race where you don't you don't even want to try it again. You want to wait. So getting to that point, whatever it takes, whether it's farmer's carries or endless pull-ups or, or grip switches or anything to blow your forearms out to get to the point where you don't want to grab the bar anymore. And then that's kind of that, that golden hour. Every rep you do after that point, it's really race-specific. Hey Caleb, I'm I'm sorry, Bo. I'm I'm switching to Caleb's camera because it's a little clearer. Bo, if you want to maybe get to the finish line, maybe we can do some interviews while we're kind of waiting for people, or if somebody hey. wants to go, I don't know if, who can maybe do that. Maybe Bo. Ashley's got a chance to come all the way back here. This has to be so stressful for these women's families at home watching, go from first to fifth to second to fourth to ah. Oh. It's chaos here. I wonder how much harder it is with men on it, though, too, with other <laughs> humans with other humans on it. It can't be helping, right? It's jostling you and shaking. Oh, she's hung up. John Mountain, we're coming to race the Savage now. We'll have a great race, John. We'll see you out there, buddy. That's a that's quite the OCR name. Oh, she just really hung up. I got Ken when you guys are ready. What? This is, this is unique. And we're staying on this just because it's so interesting to look at. Ken. Ken C. The Savage Snare. Hold it. Ken C. Yes, sir. What do you think your competition thinks of you, buddy? <laughs> I think uh, that I got a kick a little bit, and I still got it, so I'm pretty happy about that. And uh, it's an honor to race with everybody out here, man, always, every time. We said early on, Ken, they don't they, – they may gap you, they may outrun you, but they don't want any part of you at the end of a race. That if there's <laughs> blood in the water, you're going to be the one who's going to be closing it down, and that's exactly what you did. We've seen it time and time again. Yeah, man. You know, I'm getting excited for uh, Worlds and uh, for my race, too, on uh, September 11th. So pretty excited, man. I'm getting back in there, buddy. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Hope to see both of you guys soon. What did you think as you approached that last obstacle? Or, sorry, the rig? I, I mean, you know, you have to be confident uh, for these things. But I, the whole race, I... I was trying to do everything right, keep them right where I wanted them, but um, not go too far out, you know, because I don't have my legs yet um, underneath me. So I did everything right. And I knew uh, turning around the corner over there that, I mean, I was just, I was going to hit these rigs and I was going to be gone. Last question. How old are you now, Ken? (laughs) 41. Whoa! Masters on the podium. (laughs) You're a spry 41. Good job, buddy. Thank you so much. All right, man. Take care. We're going to go back to the women here on the rig. Yes, sir. Nice job, Ken. Well, I want to get a birthday check between him and Woodsy. Who's older? Woodsy, right? Woodsy just turned 41. I don't know. Oh, I thought he turned 42. Look at her. She's hanging on by her chin. She's got her chin and neck. So who, is, who is this? Who's 297? Julie Hartress. Thank you. Julie makes her appearance on screen. I like how high she's getting. Look at that. That is a good... If she can untangle her legs when she goes, if that rope ladder doesn't hang on to her, she's in a good spot. The rope ladder is, in fact, hanging on to her. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Is that Julie Hartress or Rachel Hartress? Who is that? Julie. Julie Thank you. So, 
I feel like I, we lost the answer there on the uh, what to train for. Maybe we can go back to that later. Oh, I think we got go. it in. Okay. I want to make sure she gets the chain before I claim her a second. Is she making the chain? And then we'll talk to Chris. Ashley's just fighting and clawing out here. Chris. Yes. How you feeling? Great. <laughs> Do you need to fix your hair? Okay. Yep. This is the content people are waiting for. What's up? Here. You hit it. Julie made the chain. I'm going to go beside you on Julie did make the chain? Yeah. Yep, just on over the barn doors. <laughs> yep. What do you want to ask uh, Chris? Chris, there? can you hear us? I can hear you, yes. All right, you, you started making little surges early. You had three people running next to each other, and you were the first person to start surging into turns, into obstacles. Were you feeling good, or were you just testing out, trying to break people up? Um, I was feeling good, and I just like the obstacles. Yeah. So I can move yeah, through the obstacles. Your running looks strong today, though. I Yeah, I'm never the runner, so it's always uh, always feels good when I feel okay running. So. Yeah. I slowed down a lot near the end, though. I did like the first four miles in 30 minutes, and then after that, it dropped off some. Seemed to work out all right. Fine for me. What was your take on the the, the new rig, the the hanging rope or the hanging net into that slightly vertical net into the pole? Was that was that a challenge for you, or is that something you've felt comfortable with? Um, it was a bit of a challenge. It's a lot of like upper body strength. By the end, it's pretty. Uh, I was pretty worn out. Uh, your yeah grip gets tired out, but it's doable. Um, that's I mean I like them all though because they're all a little bit different, so you're never quite sure. I mean they're always going to be challenging, um, but I feel like I mean it's just going to be a burn. It's going to be hard, but they're the perfect length where it's like okay, it's still doable, it's still possible. What are you so, doing differently than some of these other women in training? Because th there's been a few times we've seen that you've not been hung up on things that other people are uniformly getting hung up on i think people stress about it too much i see these i don't really i don't post a lot on social media and i just kind of do my own thing but uh they stress about it they go home and they train on it which is great but then you got to stop stressing about it when it's race time like when it's race time it's just go time and that's like they all get in their heads and they're like oh my arms are pumped i'm tired out like hey, it's a short race good? yes ma'am good job second okay. nice um Oh, it's doable. Like, I see the training that these women do, and they're 100% capable of it. It just takes, like, getting through it when it comes to, I mean, obviously, like, race day and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's the only thing I think I'm doing differently is I can do it, and I tell myself I can do it, and I do it. Like, all of these people are absolutely capable of it, but it's just, you know, nerves, and they get stressed out. That's did what you, I see. Did you have to fake that early on, or were you just able to always, always have that mindset? I think I just kind of always have that mindset and I think that's just kind of what I notice is maybe the difference is I see I mean just talking to the ladies just right here like this is what they dread all race long and like when yeah. they exit they're already dreading it and they're already hating it and like they're at, all of them are absolutely strong enough and can absolutely do it um, I mean at least I mean the ones that train for it you know because yeah. I don't even I don't train a lot on race I just train and it's all fun and I think can it's we? an attitude I think that's awesome. Second. Can can we get uh, – Julie is now talking to uh, the women who may be third and fourth. Can we yeah. get – can we get – Caleb, can you get your camera over there by them? Oh. Thanks she so much. Congra I, she's right in front of me. Okay. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were that close. All right. Go talk yeah. to her. Oh, well, let's just say hi. Hi. Julie. Hello. Julie, are you 42 or 43 years old? 43. Give her some credit. <laughs> well, Athlinks, Athlinks has you as 43, but I know that they, they jump it up. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm unfortunately I'm 43. <laughs> Getting up well, there at age. So Ken, Ken won the race. Ken's 41. So victory. Oh, for, I got uh, something you thought of. Yeah, go Masters. Go Masters. That's awesome. Video Ken. How, how, how'd you feel out out there today for most of the race? Um, I love the grip stuff. So this was like the ideal course for me. So my running isn't quite where I want it to be right now. I'm coming back from some ankle injuries. I had 
two ankle surgeries last year, so the running isn't there yet. But what saved me was the grip obstacle stuff. That's that's where I I like that part. That's my favorite. But it's a really you, good course. You are from Rudolph, Wisconsin. Is that near you, Bracken? No, it is not. <laughs> I like right in the middle of the state, basically uh, near Wisconsin Rapids. Bracken, you got to know Wisconsin Rapids. Please. Oh yeah, yeah, I know um, Rudolph. We're not near each other, but we're both Wisconsin. We're, okay. awesome. How come you're not out here, Bracken? Well, sure. I guess like you, I don't have the running legs, but ah. I wasn't. I wasn't. I, I wasn't going to go out there. Without, you can do it. I can, but I wasn't going to today. Ah, <laughs> uh, you missed a good course. It, there's a lot of good obstacles. I was impressed with the setup. I liked it. I'm getting a little FOMO sitting here. You should. It should. It was fun. Should have been here. here. Absolutely destroyed it. I didn't see you at all. But you were. I thought you were running with us at first. No, not really. Oh, <laughs> well, you killed it. Yeah, sure, sure I was. No, no, it's a good course, though. So, who's alive on the rig here? What, we, we have no third place woman yet. Who's alive on the rig? Not yet. Who? Uh, Morgan just Ron slipped Bo. off. Hey, Bo, I met him. I tried to swipe up on a oh. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Right, so do we know the name. We know the names of the women who are on the who are on the rig. Oh, well, let's see. No one's actually yeah, we're okay. on it right now. Is there? Oh, there's a girl right over on yeah. the far side over. Is that, is that, um, I don't know who that is. Do they both have their band too? Pretty soon here, we're gonna have some some non pro wave coming through. We ran in that situation in Ohio, Matt. We had, well, there was a teenage girl. There was like a 15-year-old or something that yeah. came through. There's three women on the rig right now. Do you Two recognize any line. of them? Do you recognize any I, of them? Oh, a fourth is on. One is as strong as an oak girl. The other two, I don't know who they are. Oh. No, I don't know either. I know her. Oak girl Oh, we're Jenny. Okay. Yeah. And they said, nope. they said Jenny Overstreet. No, no, I like we like talking to you. You you can help us oh. out here if you don't mind. Okay. Try. Yeah, no, I'm good. So what's what's the do you best have a, strategy? Wait, wait, do you have a do you have a volunteer shift after this? Yes, sir. Love it. We Love like it. running the kids race here. The kid and the kids race here is fun. It's at a uh, it's at like a um, hay maze farm thing. So the kids are using the slide that they do at hay mazes. And the uh, the big balloons you can bounce on is gonna be fun. I'll probably pre-run it, make sure it's good. So what what's the strategy these women need to enact here to get through? The transitioning from the that hanging cargo forward. What what's the best way to get, ensure that they get through? Um, they need to grab. They need to just use the rope to help them get to the ladder. And then once they're on the ladder, they have to get up high. The trick on the cheese is to stay high on the holds. You have to expect it to bend. It's going to bend. So you expect it to bend. You just have to. So are you grabbing, you grabbing on the top cutout rather than that first yes. hole? I grabbed the top one. Yeah. This lady here is got the top, but she's, she was all on one side of the board. You have to stay on both sides of the board. This lady that almost made it to the cheese. She just looks like she's giving up or is she walking back around? Well, now, walking now back dozens of people have gone through here with wet hands, and they're all they're all mucking it up, sweating on um, it. You're mostly dry by now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they had like the log. There's enough that I mean, nobody's soaking wet. Nobody's hands are soaking wet. There goes that theory. There's a girl on the ladder now. If she falls off, get her name for us, if you wouldn't mind, or and the other one too. Once she falls off, though, we don't want to. Her, her name is Beatrix, right here. Okay. Well, that won't be hard to remember. No, not at all. Let me go to my let me go to my um, roster. Pull that up, Beatrix. Uh, Matt. Yes. I, uh, Davis, I don't want to yes. talk about David. No, I told I told you that these two guys would be top twenty. They were both top ten, so yeah, we, I missed. Oh, up. we're mad at Chris. <laughs> They're mad at me. We didn't even get a call out. Yes, <laughs> you did. Is, is your what's your name? B. 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 Okay. 
Yeah. You gonna get it on the next try? I can relax. Nice. Let's go, Miranda. Miranda, only two people have made it through here yet. Third, third place is still open. Oh, oh, a girl just made it through. Made it through. Girl just made it through. The the, the woman in the the blue sports bra. Blue, yep, blue sports bra. Yeah, she looks strong approaching there. The blue girl. Can we go find oh. out who she is? Let's go follow okay, her. Never to the mind. She line. dropped. She dropped. Oh, she, she did, did, huh? Yeah. Okay. So she's just did she drop her band and she's just. Sorry, that one did not make it through. Okay, I don't see this Beatrix on my list here. It's Beatrix. It might be B. She did make it through. That one? Somebody said she dropped her van. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I've got a Beatrix Kenesai. What's your name? Krista. Krista. Okay, you're going to make it on the next track? Maybe? You got it. Shake your arms up. I'm going to get back to work. Thank right. you. All right, Matt, I'm calling that this is the one that makes it through here. Okay. We need, we just need a third place finisher. We just need a third place finisher and then we can all we can all go home. So I'm gonna need her to go ahead and make it through here. <laughs> okay, I don't okay. Beatrix, she has a different last name on uh, on the there on the uh, on the Savage here roster. Are. Here it is. Here it is, Matt. Did she make it? Yeah, she made it. Okay, I did. I didn't look like it for me, but okay. But no, this isn't Beatrix. This is everyone saying go Britney. Is this Britney? Yes, Brittany Martinez. Yes. Okay, everybody's saying Williams on here, but okay. Her name is definitely Britney. <laughs> Someone in the background saying that's my best friend. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, best friend, you just got a podium by association. You just made two hundred and fifty dollarines. Right? Do you make two hundred fifty bucks, American? Hopefully, it's American. Let's definitely get an a, a interview with her if we can before we close it out. Look at that! Look how happy! What's that feeling like? I wish I knew what that felt like. Running into a podium spot. <laughs> oh, it's stop it's, the watch. It's like eighty percent of the feeling of of getting Josh Chase to drop out of a race. Wow. Look at that. That's that's a great feeling. All right, let's give her a second and then we'll definitely we'll, we'll chat with her. So the leaderboard has her as dun da dun. Oops, go to the women. Pro female. Brittany Martinez in one hour, twelve minutes, fifty six seconds. All right, let's try to chat with her real quick. Brittany! Oh, Oh, she's gonna go. <laughs> she asked if she could recross the finish line. I, I love like it. That. Love it. You don't want to disqualify yourself on your first podium. Oh, we wanted to get an interview with her, but um, she's riding high right now, Matt. I know. That's why I want to talk to her. I know. That's cool to watch. It is. We talk with her. Ask her about her first podium, Brittany. The leaderboard has her as Martinez. Everyone was calling her Williams. I'm going to put her up by her leaderboard name, and we can get clarity. Okay, Luke, could you speed it up a little bit, buddy? Come on, man. I know you're tired. Let's go. Thanks, buddy. She wants to root on her fellow competitors. You're going to have to unmute yourself. She celebrates with her buddies. Love it. This is great. Brittany. All right, let's get a word with her really quickly, Caleb. Caleb, can you tap her on the shoulder and let her know we'd like to speak with her? <laughs> so, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Let me switch over now. Stop. Stop. Matt doesn't remember meeting me at a park in Atlanta. Jerry Well, I. We'll see if we pop up. Caleb, you're black here, buddy. You got to turn the camera around. The we're trying to. It should be said. 
Well, let's do a radio interview, Matt. Brittany. What's up, Matt? Which park did I meet you at? Um, one day we were walking around with Derek Franklin, and we had to sell these, and you were walking out of your house. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You you met you just had vegan food at Cecilie's and you walked by my house. Yeah, we were sitting at the park across the street. Now I remember. Now I remember. But you guys now I remember. Now I remember. Well, nice to see you. Beautiful. I can't see you, but thanks. Is this your first Spartan is this your first Savage Podium? Um, first Savage overall podium, yeah. And did you just get married? We got married in April, yeah. Is this the best year of your life? A bit, yeah. We just um we did a seven week straight of races. This is week seven and we were on a, a month long road trip on the camper. So we did um barbarian Indian uh, get some motivation event. And we'll see all blood and then down here. So yeah, it's been pretty good. Bracken, what would you like to ask? Seven straight weeks of racing. Did you have any legs left today or was it all about obstacles? Um my running's been getting progressively better, a little, little bit, nowhere near great. Um, my legs were a little tired today, but I felt good. It's flat. It's like, what, 56 feet of elevation total or something like that. So it was just kind of focused. I knew the first three miles or so were going to be straight running. So in my mind, I was like, just do a 5K pace, get through it, and then when the obstacles come, take that as a, as a rest. Did you have to redo anything today? Yeah, anger's away. I did like tried to go back to back. I don't know. I kept slipping on the last one, threw it, and kicked the bell. Um, I think that was it. Well, we had a lot of women hung up on that last rig, and you came through and you earned that third place position. So, congrats on that first podium. That's an awesome feeling, and hopefully, it's the first of many. Hopefully. Thank you. All right. Next time you come through my neighborhood, try Soul Veg. I like that better than Tassili's. Try what? Soul Vegetarian. Oh, okay. We'll try that. We uh, Anytime we're in Atlanta, we try some new food. Um, so we'll definitely give that a try. Thanks for recommending. All right. Congratulations. All righty, Bracken. Well, you've Thank learned you. uh, you. you've learned uh, about a new racer. We learned she likes vegan food. Um, I don't know if you know this, Bracken, but I'm everywhere. People meet me everywhere. Who can keep up, right? There's no way of telling where you're going to see Matt Davis next. Right. I mean, that literally, it's funny. They just happen to be across the street from my house, and I recognized them. I was like, that's OCR people, and then I went over and chatted. Um, but what did we learn today, Bracken? The more things change, the more they stay the same. Savage race is about obstacle completion. You've got to be fast to be there, but you have got to have your grip taken care of. And we keep creeping closer to the end of the year. And we know that the end of the year means OCR Worlds, and Savage is prepping people for that. And I think everyone's got to get out and do a Savage and make sure that your grip's in order. I mean, look at the gap here, right? Yeah, that's wild. Right? If you can if you can see this, it's full screen layout. Nine so, minutes and then eleven minutes. Right. So uh twenty minutes between first and third. That's a lot slower, but you can do obstacles. So right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's probably going to start changing the way some people race. There are there are probably some people in that next pack of racer who are going to say, you know what, forget it. I am not going to ever redline my run because there's there's a 20 minute free gap sitting there. If I run 15 minutes slower and do my obstacles fast, I win. You know, and that's kind of a crazy way to think about it, but some people might finally start saying, I'm not overextending early because I know the carnage that's going to happen late. Well, and then we ask the question that we always land on, Bracken, is a 20 minute gap good or bad for our sport? I think it's only bad if it's because it's impossible. I think that you see people that come through and make it right through and show that it is possible if you're preparing correctly for it. 
So no, I, I think there are times where I look at a race and say, this is bad. That's not a race I look at that today and say, this is bad. I think that people got tripped up and then they, was, they were digging their own grave. This, this was not an impossible course. It was a challenging course. So I think this was the results are not indicative of how hard the course actually was because some people cruised right through while they were tired. So the next race for Savage uh, is August 7th, Pennsylvania. Do, do we, have you been to that course? I have not. I know nothing about the Pennsylvania course. Well, nothing. Well, we will uh, we will see we will see you folks there. I think I think we're ready to wrap it up today, eh, Bracken. Yeah, it was a pleasure being with you again, Matt. I like watching these battles, and it's always good to see someone get their first their first podium. Yeah, that was pretty that was pretty sweet um, to watch her excitement going through the finish, and then to see her hugging her competitors. I, I think that's pretty awesome. Watching that balanced out by watching Ken's probably. 20th but that satisfaction of the old dog Hagen hanging on and teaching teaching the young guns i like that it was a good day all right thank you so much for watching everybody we will see you august 7th savage pennsylvania till next time